Now we're going to be looking at three important special tests used in the diagnosis of tarsal tunnel syndrome. The first one is Tunnell's sign or Tunnell's test. Now Tunnell's sign is applicable any time in the body you have a nerve that runs superficially. And certainly as the tibial nerve runs through the tarsal tunnel, it's certainly superficial enough to where you can whack it with either your fingers or a reflex hammer. So, as a standalone test, Tunnell's sign actually has very weak clinical value, but it's commonly covered in curriculum, so we're going to cover it here. And note that the next two special tests we're going to look at have very strong psychometric properties. The patient's going to be positioned in supine or hook line. Here I have the patient in supine, and I've had her externally rotate her entire right lower extremity so that it exposes the medial aspect of the ankle where the tarsal tunnel is. And the way this test is performed is you're first going to identify the medial malleolus. Once you've identified the medial malleolus, you're going to repetitively tap anterior to that. This targets the anterior tibial nerve, which is a minor branch of the tibial nerve. The major branch is the one posterior to it right here, the posterior tibial nerve. You tap up and down repetitively behind the medial malleolus. And what you're attempting to do here is you're attempting to strike branches of the tibial nerve. And so a positive result here is going to be reproduction of distal numbness and or paresthesia, such as tingling or burning shooting pain into the foot. The second special test for tarsal tunnel syndrome is the dorsiflexion eversion test. And you can see right away that it has much stronger psychometric properties than Tunnell's sign. You can see here that its specificity is 100%. So if you have a positive result on this test, which we'll see in a minute is tenderness in the area of the posterior tibial nerve, then there's pretty much a 100% chance that the person has tarsal tunnel syndrome. So very strong specificity. Can't get any better than that. With sensitivity, it depends on which symptom you're monitoring. So numbness, pain, or tenderness. Numbness had a sensitivity of 25%. Pain had a sensitivity of 57%. But the best one right here, which is tenderness, specifically in the area of the posterior tibial nerve, has a sensitivity of 98%. So as a standalone test, the dorsiflexion eversion test has strong clinical value. So the patient's also going to be positioned in supine, as you see right here. And again, I've had her externally rotate her entire right lower extremity so that I can expose that tarsal tunnel. To perform this test, the PT is going to passively stretch the patient's ankle into maximum dorsiflexion, maximum subtalar eversion, and then also stretch these toes into extension at their MTP joints. This position puts the most stretch on the tarsal tunnel, the medial aspect of the ankle, where the tibial nerve resides. Once you have this position, you're going to hold it for about 10 seconds. After those 10 seconds are up, you're going to firmly palpate the posterior tibial nerve, the area where that nerve resides. And you're assessing for any one of these three things, numbness, pain, and tenderness, especially the tenderness. And if the patient does not have tenderness in that area, with this test, then you can strongly rule down tarsal tunnel syndrome because of the high sensitivity of tenderness in that area. And again, a positive result for the dorsiflexion eversion test is going to be tenderness in the area of the posterior tibial nerve. Note that this might also be associated with concurrent numbness, paresthesia, or pain in this area, or the toe, the ball of the foot, or the heel. The third special test we're going to look at is the triple compression test, which, as a standalone test, also has fairly strong psychometric properties. Its specificity is 100%, meaning that if you have a positive triple compression test, there's pretty much a 100% chance that you have tarsal tunnel syndrome. And the sensitivity is also pretty good at 85%. The patient's going to be positioned in supine, as we've seen before, with their leg externally rotated like this to expose the tarsal tunnel. Now, to perform this test, the PT is going to passively move the patient's ankle into maximum plantar flexion and maximum subtalar inversion. So there's the plantar flexion, and then here is the subtalar inversion. And then using two fingers, probably the second and third digits, 
you're going to find the medial malleolus and then apply a firm pressure behind it to compress the posterior tibial nerve. And you're going to hold this position for 30 seconds, although I'm not going to do that in the video. All of these movements are actually going to compress the tibial nerve. And so when you compress the nerve, you might expect the positive result to be numbness, paresthesia, or pain in the toe, ball of the foot, or the heel. Basically, distal numbness, distal paresthesias, or distal pain. Thank you for all your support. Be sure to check out my Instagram for cool science and not science stuff.